Hi, I'm Dave Kendig with Kendiga Design and Bitchin Rides and one of my very, very favorite partners, Lingenfelter Performance. And we were so lucky to be chosen to have one of our CF1 Roadsters here this year at the 2021 SEMA Show. In a world of automotive customization, enthusiasts are turning their vehicles into jaw-dropping masterpieces. And at the forefront of this movement stands Dave Kendig, the visionary behind Kendig Design. Dave is not just a designer, he's a visionary with visions that help create a design company like no other, Kendiga Design. In Salt Lake City, Utah, Kendiga Design is the holy grail of automotive customization, courtesy of Dave Kendig. The reputation of the company, sky high. Think international recognition, exceptional craftsmanship, and designs that redefine cool. With a crew of top-notch pros, Ken Digga Design isn't just pushing boundaries, they're shattering them, one sleek ride at a time. So why should a company like this be engaged in not just one, but multiple controversial lawsuits? If the reputation is so high, what's stopping Dave from saving face and keeping this company above these troubles? The answer lies in a story that will leave you disturbed and bewildered. Join us as we roll back the currents on why Dave Kendig was sued. So you want to hear it? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to hear it. Give it a rip. <laughs> Dave was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. As a kid, he sketched sleek rides in his spare time. In 1999, he turned that passion to a powerhouse. Ken Diggy Design was born. Specializing in breathing new life into classics, Ken digs wizardry with wheels caught Velocity Channel's eye, and thus they invited him to start a reality TV show with them. You know which one, don't you? The show is a turbocharged journey through Ken Diggs' world, where every car is a canvas, and the result? A surge in Ken Diggs' fame and fortune, as his creations revved up fans' hearts worldwide. Man was famous. He was raking in profits like never before, and his designs were everywhere. Everyone wanted a Ken Diggs design for their cars, and it was a very good time for the company. Ken Diggs design isn't just a garage. It's a horsepower haven where cars get reborn with cutting-edge designs. The moment you walk into the garage, you're left with no other option but to be blown away. With a crew that shares Ken Diggs' car craze enthusiasm, the shop has become a driving force behind his fortune. But that's not all in his toolkit. Ken Digg cashes in on merch, from swanky wearables to must-have car components. And when he's not wrenching, you'll find Ken Digg revving up crowds at car expos and events, adding more gas to his financial tank. Topping it off, he's got prime real estate in Salt Lake City, his warehouse serving as ground zero for Ken Digga Design. Today, he's said to be worth around $2.5 million, and the autometer is still ticking. This guy had it all, but then trouble started. Back when the Ken Digga Design team was firing on all cylinders, they had a minor problem with another car design company. Back then in 2015, Ken Digga Design squared off against Creative Controls, a Michigan-based outfit. The bone of contention? Alleged patent poaching and product pinching. That's a good step, right? Why would they allow anyone to steal their designs? Except, it wasn't that great of a move. Despite the severity of the situation, Creative Controls didn't just roll over. Nope. They revved their engines and launched a countersuit, arguing that the Utah court, where the showdown was set to go down, had no business calling the shots. They slammed the brakes on Utah's jurisdiction claim, pointing out that their only dance with Ken Diggett was through their cyber presence, their website. Creative Controls insist that their online offerings were all homegrown, no borrowed feathers. Plus, they had a surprise up their sleeve. Ken Diggett scribes about image usage? Turns out, they had a green light from the Ken Diggett crew themselves, sealed with a letter of approval. Anyone could imagine what both lawyers would be going through in court, and it wouldn't even look good. Even the judge seemed a bit confused. Who was right and who is wrong? As it also turned out, Creative Control's last Utah encounter was a blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment. A loan transaction with a Utah client. Creative Control swore it was all thanks to an online order request, promptly fulfilled with a product delivery. But here's where it gets juicy. Ken Diggett spilled the beans, revealing that the Utah client was none other than a relative of their own team member. Allegedly, this order was a preemptive move in the legal chess game. It felt like Creative Controls was just trying to cheat them out of their very own design and with a team member's family. After a heated debate, both sides hit the brakes. They agreed that painting Creative Controls with personal jurisdiction over the deal would be a misfire. 
There had to be a way to sort this out, right? Well, after a whirlwind of legal wranglings, the gavel finally fell and the courtroom drama reached its climax. In a stunning twist, the judge delivered a verdict that left both Kendega Designs and Creative Controls feeling victorious. In a courtroom packed with tension, the judge delivered the first blow. Ken Diggett had indeed established that Creative Controls had engaged with clients in Utah, yet amidst the legal stands, Ken Diggs' evidence fell short in proving any infringement of their goods. Ultimately, there was nothing the court could do about the copyright infringement that Ken Diggett was suing for. In a surprising twist, the Utah court also ruled that Creative Controls couldn't be held accountable solely because their website drew in clients from Utah. Creative Controls had argued that their website was designed to reach a broad audience, not specifically to target Utah residents. The courtroom tension peaked as the judge acknowledged the validity of Creative Controls' arguments. With a swift stroke of the gavel, the court delivered a verdict. Punishing Creative Controls for the mere accessibility of their website to Utah clients would be unjust. And that was it. The whole battle was over. To be fair, neither party had won, it was just a middle ground. However, the whole suing and countersuing had left both teams in some mess. But for Ken Diggett, there was even more trouble ahead, this time around with its clients. In 2019, Ken Diggett embarked on an ambitious venture, a 1974 Dodge Charger rebuild and customization commissioned by a consortium of over 30 chiropractors and wellness professionals nationwide. With an initial deposit exceeding $230,000 towards the total project cost of $670,000, the stage was set for an epic automotive transformation. However, what followed were two tumultuous years marred by a series of obstacles. The onset of a global lockdown, coupled with supply chain disruptions and internal challenges within Ken Diggin, conspired to impede progress on the Dodge. As additional payments flowed in from the chiropractors, frustration brewed over the lack of tangible advancements on the car itself, casting a shadow of doubt over the project's trajectory. In early 2022, a group of chiropractors took a bold step, filing a lawsuit against Kendiga Designs and its founder, Dave Kendig, personally. Their accusations cut deep, alleging fraud, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The crux of their claim? Ken Diggett's purported misrepresentations about their capacity to complete the project, all while pocketing hefty payments. Despite shelling out over half the project's cost, all they have to show for it is a skeletal Dodge Charger. The stakes couldn't be higher. Seeking reimbursement of their deposits plus damages, the chiropractors are poised for a legal showdown. Ken Diggett, however, vehemently denies any foul play, citing external hurdles for the project's delays. Yet, the lawsuit casts a looming shadow over the one celebrated customizer. Efforts at mediation hit a dead end, prompting Ken Diggett to launch a robust defense, refuting claims to fraud. Armed with legal firepower, they're ready for a protracted battle. Discovery and depositions loom, promising a drawn-out legal tussle that could culminate in trial or settlement. But the ripple effects extend beyond this single lawsuit. A flurry of similar legal action from disgruntled clients paint a grim picture. Allegations of mismanagement, communication breakdowns, and refund refusals suggest deeper systemic issues. How can Diggett navigate these treacherous legal waters will shape its fate in the cutthroat world of automotive customization? The initial saga of Ken Diggett Design vs. Creative Controls didn't just stay confined to the courtroom, it exploded into the media spotlight like wildfire. News outlets scramble to cover the juicy details, while online forums and social media platforms buzz with speculation and analysis. Opinions flew like sparks in a wildfire, fueled by incomplete information and personal biases. And with the chiropractors, it was even more juicy. Some even argue that Creative Controls may have been on the receiving end of Ken Diggett Design's fraudulent acts in the past. Amidst the chaos, Ken Diggett Design found itself at the center of a whirlwind of scrutiny. The second lawsuit cast a shadow over their reputation and strained their resources, testing the resilience of the company. But amidst the storm, there were glimmers of opportunity and growth. The turbulent ordeal forced Ken Diggett to confront challenges head-on, fostering a period of introspection and adaptation. As the dust settled, one thing was clear. The Ken Digg lawsuit had left an indelible mark, shaping the company's trajectory in unforeseen ways. In the end, Ken Diggett lawsuit served as a stark reminder of intricacies and hurdles within the automotive customization sector. It underscored the importance of transparency, managing expectations, and nurturing clear communication between businesses and their clientele. Armed with the lessons gleaned from the dispute, the company stands poised to navigate future challenges with confidence and clarity, ensuring that their commitment to quality and integrity remains unwavering in the face of adversity. 
As for Dave himself, he's still riding towards the sunset.